Scientists found 1,500 billion orphan stars buried within a gorgeous image. And that planetary alignment on June 3rd you've been hearing about? Not worth it. That and more on this week's Space News from Ad Astra. Welcome! I am Swapna Krishna. Let's start with some great news. Voyager 1 is sending science data back to Earth. I've delivered quite a few updates on Voyager 1 over the past few months. The short version is that in November of 2023, the spacecraft started sending gibberish back to Earth. There was no meaningful communication with the spacecraft, and many of us in the space community thought that was it for the probe. But the team at NASA JPL persevered and managed to troubleshoot and fix the spacecraft by figuring out that a chip on Voyager 1 had gone bad. They gave Voyager 1 new instructions on where to store information. That is a very brief summary, but if you want to know more, check out my video on the fix. The Voyager 1 team had engineering data back last time I updated, but it was a longer process to get back the science data. But on May 22nd, NASA announced that the team had received data from two of Voyager 1's four remaining functional science instruments. Six instruments are either no longer functional or were turned off after the spacecraft's Saturn flyby in 1980. The team is continuing to work on the two remaining science instruments, so hopefully we will hear more good news soon. Moving on, if you've been active on social media, you may have heard a lot of hype about a planetary alignment coming up on June 3rd. I actually heard about it from a teacher at my kid's school who wanted to know if this was really a thing. Well, I am here to tell you it is not a thing. Well, sort of. The planets will align. Our solar system is actually flat like a pancake, and pretty much all the planets are on the same plane, which is why they appear in our sky along a line called the ecliptic, which is the path the sun traces in our sky. If you want to know more about the ecliptic, check out my book, Stargazing, available wherever you buy books. Well, on June 3rd, what people have called a parade of planets will line up in the night sky. Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune for just a moment. This will happen about an hour before dawn wherever you are. However, this is not worth waking up for at 4 a.m. Basically, you won't be able to see much with the unaided eye. Planetary alignments aren't exactly common, but they're not rare either. In 2023, there was a five-planet alignment. Also, the Sun is going to ruin most of this view. Morning twilight will make Mercury and Jupiter hard to see. Uranus is really only visible to the unaided eye from very dark sky areas. And forget about seeing Neptune unless you have binoculars or a telescope. Anyone who watches my videos regularly knows I love astronomical events. I love talking about these kinds of space things and getting everybody hyped up for them. But I also love sleep. And in this case, I'm telling you, just get your sleep. Do not worry about this. In other news, Boeing Starliner still has not launched. But the flight is on track for a June 1st launch. That time would be 12.25 p.m. Eastern. The road to this point since the initial May 6th launch date has been very bumpy. If you want to know more about the flight itself, I have a video about that and NASA's commercial crew program more generally. But here is a brief summary of what has happened since that scrub. The launch was initially scrubbed two hours before the scheduled liftoff time due to a pressure valve on the upper stage of the rocket. Because this valve was seated off its position, it had completed too many open and close cycles and was beyond its lifetime rating, so it had to be replaced. That took longer than expected because they left the rocket stacked with the spacecraft on top in the assembly building, but they had to use a crane to basically lift Starliner, not off the rocket, but just to relieve the pressure the spacecraft was putting on the rocket while they did this work. But before they could do that, they needed to do some work to ensure that Starliner could be safely lifted in this manner while still bolted onto the Atlas V launch vehicle. Figuring all that out was what delayed the launch from May 10th to May 17th. They also discovered a helium leak after they scrubbed the launch on May 6th. This leak was in the thruster system of the Starliner capsule. Now this is important because many, including myself, reported that NASA knew about the leak during the countdown. According to NASA, this isn't accurate. I went back and checked the broadcast, and yeah, it does not appear there was a mention of a helium leak as far as I could tell. But they found this leak 
after the scrub and we're monitoring it. Starliner uses helium basically to push propellant to its thrusters. The leak itself wasn't a big deal, but they wanted to understand why it was happening. They traced it back to a faulty seal, and they don't feel like they need to fix it at this point. But while they were analyzing this leak, NASA also decided to do an additional review of the propulsion system just to make sure they hadn't missed anything. They found a redundancy issue. It's not related to the helium leak, but was highlighted by it. Basically, Starliner has three different ways it can perform a deorbit burn to come back to Earth, using different combinations of its thrusters. That's part of the redundancy NASA insists on, especially for crewed flights. But they basically found an unlikely scenario where a combination of thruster failures could leave Starliner without a path to reentry. They wanted to ensure they knew how to work through that scenario in case it should arise, which is very unlikely. They cited a 0.77% chance that this could occur. So that is what NASA has been working through these past few weeks, along with Boeing, ULA, and Aerojet Rocketdyne, which manufactured Starliner's propulsion system. There has been some criticism of NASA for their slow release of information, and I think that's fair because it's been a few weeks since that first launch scrub with really no substantial updates until this press conference. NASA held a flight readiness review to ensure that Starliner is ready for that June 1st date on May 29th, and there will be another press conference before launch tomorrow. So let's see if this sticks. If this flight gets delayed again, there are backup launch opportunities on June 2nd, 5th, and 6th. The ISS is relatively clear of traffic for the flight, so that shouldn't be an issue, even pushing later into the summer. But once we get past early to mid-June, the launch vehicle might need to have some parts swapped out. So we'll see what happens. Moving on, you may have seen my video from last week about Euclid's first science images, which were breathtaking. But those were the observatory's first science images. It turns out, though, there was some really cool science in a previous batch of images, the first full-color images from Euclid, from about six months ago. What you're seeing is the Perseus cluster of galaxies. And within this image, there are a thousand galaxies in this cluster in the foreground. But you can also see over a hundred thousand galaxies that are further away in the distance. The Perseus Cluster is located about 240 million light-years away, and it's one of the universe's most massive structures. Well, hidden within this image were 1,500 billion orphan stars scattered within the Perseus Cluster. An orphan star is a star that doesn't belong to a galaxy and is instead drifting between galaxies. You can discern them in this image by their bluish color and the way they're clustered together. The question here is how so many stars were ripped from their host galaxies, because stars form within galaxies. The team thinks that these stars may have formed on the outskirts of their larger host galaxies and then may have been ripped away from them because of interaction with smaller dwarf galaxies. It's possible that the Perseus cluster went through a merger with another galaxy group, and this is the result. It's always cool to find the science within these breathtaking images. Studying these orphan stars will help scientists learn more about star formation, galaxy collisions, and dark matter distribution. In cool international news, China is about to land a lunar lander on the far side of the moon. Chang'e 6 launched on May 3rd, and it's been orbiting the moon for about a month waiting for optimal landing conditions. Now, it looks like we have them. It's landing at the South Pole Aitken Basin, where the sun started rising on May 28th. The time is 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, June 1st, and the service mission will only be about 48 hours long. The plan is for the lander to collect samples of the lunar surface, both scooping up materials and then also drilling into the surface. These will launch off the lunar surface in an ascent vehicle, rendezvous with an orbiter, and then head back to Earth to arrive here around June 25th. These would be the first lunar surface samples from the far side of the moon. Let's cross our fingers this goes well. In launch news, SpaceX's Starship is currently scheduled for its fourth test launch on June 5th, with a launch window opening at 7 a.m. Central Time. But that launch date is dependent on obtaining a launch license from the FAA, which SpaceX does not currently have. I will have a full video early next week running down the specifics of what to expect during that launch, what SpaceX needs to do for this to be considered a success, 
and the possible larger repercussions on NASA's moon landing missions should SpaceX not figure out successful return for both stages on this test flight. And that is just about all the news I have for you this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.